Welcome to the ninth night of the eShift Music Festival. I'm Jeremy Rose, and I'm really looking forward tonight to launching my new video series, Face to Face. And I'll be chatting to wonderful bassist and artistic director of the Sydney Improviser Music Association, Zoe Houtman. And of course, SEMA are proud sponsors of this festival. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land. And tonight, Zoe is coming from Dark and Jung country of the central coast of New South Wales. I'd like to pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Earshift Music is an independent record label that features the very best in contemporary jazz and creative music from the Australian music community with an international outlook. This is the fourth edition of our festival and this year we're really celebrating the resilience of artists in what has been an incredibly challenging time for musicians all around the world. We're excited to be bringing you performances direct from the intimacy of artists' homes. Now tonight I'm premiering this track, Whispers, which comes from my face-to-face -face series. And the series really enforces the importance of what makes us human. It's a musical journey that steers our spiritual compass towards connections with others and placing value in what's important. Connections we have with ourselves, each other, and the wider world. It features Steve Barry on piano, Noel Mason on bass, and Alex Herlin on drums. So sit back, relax, and see you shortly when I chat to Zoe. See you soon.
Yeah. Zoe. <laughs> that was awesome. Congrats. How are you going? <laughs> Thanks I'm a good. Lot. I'm good. Thanks for having me on in the yeah. fest. Great. Nice to have a yeah. little chat. Yeah, definitely. How um have you managed to catch much of the festival? What's I've been seen a so far? Yeah, I've seen a couple of things. It's been hard timing wise with the kids, but um because daylight savings, we were chatting about this actually before we got on, but daylight savings has really messed with my kids in a bad way um, this time. So that's been that's been fun. But yeah, I've caught a few things. I guess one of the, one of the ones I really loved is um, Cameron Undy. I'm such a fan of his his, and it, um, it's great seeing him play solo guitar. Isn't it incredible? Yeah. Oh, so great. I know it's um, yeah, yeah. It's been it's been a really interesting format actually to um, to get. Uh, not only you can, you can hear these artists in in a wonderful sort of sol, solo intimate setting in their home, but also the the artist chats has, have kind of opened up um, and allowed allowed everyone to really sort of engage with the the artists in a, in a much more intimate way. Yeah, I think that's really special, and we were so happy um, to come on board at, as SEMA, you know, to help make this happen. And and I think that that is such a nice thing for audiences to see because you don't often see where artists are working and especially in this, you know, the last 18 months, you know, that's been what a lot of people have been doing. You know, they're playing at home and doing what they can um, to remain creative. So it's really lovely to be able to support people in their own homes and, you know, get a little insight into their creative process. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, some of the artists were saying it, it was just so nice to have something to look forward to <laughs> I know. Uh, during this, this, this lockdown, you know, it's, um, yeah. I, guess, I mean, Victoria's going through, uh, a longer one, but you know, ours is what, 15 weeks now. Um, yeah. so it's, uh, you know, it's been such a tough time for, for musicians, but it's, it's also, it's also, um, really interesting to see how everyone has engaged with the medium of live streaming whether they've used pre-record or, or you know, tried to use just just one camera or or, or multi multi camera, um, and also it's funny to watch even some of the most um, accomplished technical technical musicians say that they they struggle with with technology like Scott Tinkler, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I know when we were discussing Scott being part of the festival, I mean, the main thing I was really vibed about is that view, his I house, know. You know where he lives. It's like just so spectacular i don't know if any of the people watching follow him on instagram but he's always just putting up these ridiculous photos of him fishing or you know playing trumpet out in the you know near his yeah. dam and it's yeah. just so beautiful in tasmania yeah. yeah and um and i don't know if you caught reuben lewis's one but he uh he did amazing collage of himself overdubbing himself uh not only or the audio of it but but visually you could see three rubens on the screen oh wow playing, you know so um i mean he's he's really on top of the, the technology but i think it's definitely opened up so many new possibilities for artists to i mean we don't have to leave leave our own rooms and neither do our audiences and you know it's also changed the accessibility of um to to engage with audiences all around australia and and, and internationally yeah, absolutely. I think everyone will be looking forward to getting out there and doing live shows again. Those that I know I'm hanging for it now. This time it's just been it's just been such a long time. It's just been too long. And now I'm like, okay, I've done enough gardening, done enough surfing. <laughs> well, not enough surfing, but you know, I'm not really improving. I just need to get back playing because it's sort of driving me crazy. Um yeah, I think a lot of people are feeling that way. I know we've just started programming uh, some of the, you know, next year, early next year shows for SEMA and it's just so nice to call people and say, do you want a gig? And everyone's like, yes, yes, really? I can't wait. And it's really it feels good to be doing something positive and, yeah, looking forward to getting back to playing myself as well. What, and what have you got coming up, Jeremy? You've got, I mean, I know there's a few shows that you'll be doing for us which is really great coming up and um what what else is on yeah. the horizon for you uh well i've got the aforementioned video series which will be coming out um intermittently over the, i guess the next six months uh so there'll, there'll be an accompanying album that that'll that'll be released with that uh sometime next year i have a um a live album that i haven't really announced yet um that was recorded at phoenix central park with uh tully ryan uh, ben Carey and Novak Manolovich, um, which I'm really excited about. 
um yeah visions of nah obviously uh that, that you know we're we're excited to be performing with sema at some point we have a new album coming out uh next year that's with stella magossian hillary Geddes, and um uh and bobby singh um you almost uh, forgot your band members for a second there i saw that yes um <laughs> <laughs> no, we also we also work a lot with Adam Yil Yilmaz, so yeah. I wasn't sure. Yeah. I, was, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, but we work with both. Um, I mean, both of those <laughs> those pretty players are amazing. Choice. Exactly, pretty, yeah, pretty good choice of collaborators. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Basesh, we launched an album in in um, July, but um, uh, we we didn't get to to launch the album as which was also going to happen as part of SEMA uh, in August. So. Yes. I was very disappointed about that. We got about a month into our winter series, which I'd worked on a lot and was really proud of and then had to pull it all apart. It was devastating. Um, likewise, with the Women's Festival, we had to do the same thing, Sydney International Women's Jazz Festival. Although it's, it looks like we are, with restrictions easing a bit, we are actually going to do a little mini weekend of shows for the Women's Festival in November, so from November 10th, I believe, or 11th. Um, for a weekend, which is great. So that was really nice. We're lucky in that way, I guess, because we're a small organisation. We can pivot pretty quickly. Mm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Visions of Nah, as you mentioned, will be part of that. And, yeah it's, oh, yeah, it's really nice to be able to get something kind of really quickly back, you know, for yeah. the live audience. And do you think, do you think audiences are going to be um, showing up? Uh, is there a hesitancy? I mean, have you, have you spe been speaking to... People. It's hard to know. I mean, all you can go on, I guess, is last time. I think, you know, last time when things opened up, people were just dying to get out and see music. And and I'm hoping that the same thing will happen this time. I mean, we're really safe with all our events. They're going to be, you know, really COVID safe and we're very aware of the safety of our artists and our audiences. Uh, so that's a top priority for us. So anyone who comes to a SEMA event, you know you're going to be as safe as you as we can possibly make it um and i'm just hoping that everyone wants to come out and support all the musicians who've been doing it just so incredibly yeah tough in the venues we're trying to go around a lot of different venues because we like to support all the different local venues as well um so i'm really hoping they do i'm hoping everyone does come out and, and we can you know get get this show back on the road hmm. yeah i mean it's it's um it's pretty sad that uh, both Melbourne and Wangaratta jazz festivals have been totally cancelled uh, for this yeah. year. You know, I guess Melbourne was meant to start uh, next Friday, the fifteenth, thirteenth uh, right. of October, right. and um, and, it and gets a project. To that, yeah. yeah, it gets to that point where it's just because um, I was involved with Wangaratta for many years. Last year, we did the hybrid. You know, we did the on online event and it's just that thing of waiting, waiting, waiting. You want to go, you want to do the, you know, the live event, but it's just so risky and all the costs involved and the admin, everything involved in it is so hard. And and I think, you know, they made the right decision, obviously seeing where Victoria's gone now as well, um, making that the call that they did. But, yeah, it's devastating for everyone involved, like all artists and audiences and the organisers and, yeah, hopefully um, we've all got very high hopes for 2022. I feel like we've been saying that for the last three yeah. years. We keep yeah. hoping the next year is going to be a bit better, but I really I do feel like with the yeah. vaccination rates on the rise, 2022, I've, yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm even looking, just considering international travel for the past 18 months has been totally uh, <laughs> not even an option but now i'm starting to think oh I, you know that that might be on the cards at, at some point which i think so i mean my, my cousin is gallivanting all around europe at the moment she she got over there for she actually went over to do some international volleyball refereeing in tokyo and then went on to do some work in um in brussels and she's you know she's posting all these things from paris and all over the place you know and yeah. and they're out and about they're watching gigs and yeah. So, you know, they're a bit ahead of us, I guess, with vaccinations and all that kind of stuff. And so it's kind of positive to see that the music industry, at least over there, is starting to, uh, people are doing shows, same in, in the US, people are doing shows again and tours yeah. announced. So yeah, I know, yeah, I've just been booked for a, a whole heap of shows next year in Australia, like tours and stuff. So that's really good to see those bigger events are coming, starting to come back. So good. yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, tell us, tell us what you're up to, what uh, uh, as a as a wonderful basis and 
artists well, yourself? This year, this year, not much. I've got a recording coming up with Ian Moss, which I'm really excited about, be on his new record. Um, and we've been doing, Evan, my husband's a drummer, and um, we've been doing a lot of kind of session stuff at home, which has been really great to be able to do that. And then, yeah, gigs for me don't really start back until next year. I have a whole heap of shows coming up with Missy Higgins and Ian Moss and all those kind of people. Those those kind of shows are quite, they're big audience numbers. So they're, in a way, the last <laughs> to come yeah. back. Um, but it's the yeah i've got a whole heap of dates in the book so fingers yeah. crossed they stay there a lot of it's outdoor outdoor events stuff like that big festivals yeah. and you know yeah but yeah it's nice to um have something to look forward to i was actually really emotional when the email came through and it's all these dates and i was just like oh yes <laughs> you start thinking like am i ever gonna play yeah. the bass again like ever <laughs> but <laughs> yes it's i good will to have be. hope and yeah, I know, something, yeah, something to look forward to, isn't it? And it's nice to see that these event organisers are forging ahead because I know some of these have been rescheduled like three, four times. The same thing's happened for us at SEMA. You know, you cancel and you rebook and you cancel and rebook and it's exhausting. And so it's really nice to see that people are sticking, you know, sticking with it and, and haven't given up. And I know a lot of people have been hit really, really hard and unfortunately we'll lose venues. And But, um, yeah, hopefully. Well, I was just going to ask, people. yeah. Do you think do you think that the scene and the music industry is going to is going to take a long time to to get back to where it was and how you know how think, how different do you think it's going to be I mean is it you're just so. going to see a loss of venues and musicians change career paths I think so and I think it's especially really difficult for early career musicians or early even to mid career musicians and uh, or people just starting out who are thinking oh I want to go into music and and stuff like that because as you know you when you first start playing and getting into the scene, you just have to go out all the time and go to jams and go to meet people and go to gigs and do all that and kind of the networking because it's such a um, word of mouth industry, I guess. And so it's been impossible for people to do that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I worry. I often worry about the younger musos. If this had happened to me, if this pandemic had happened when I was in my 20s, it would have been really difficult and probably had a huge impact on where I you know my career and yeah. where I have gotten to but it's yeah I I just really so with through SEMA we try we, we've been trying to really support people in the way like with uh, um, commissions and mentorship sort of things anything we can think of to kind of keep people feeling connected and that there is a support network there for them and mm. and that yeah. we care and <laughs> and and to try and yeah give people gigs and just whatever we can do but yeah, even with the venues, it's just been crazy because you're booking, everyone's rescheduling shows and it's not just, you know, it's through every genre. And so venue availability is just insane to try and get dates anywhere. The backlog, everyone, yeah, backlog's going. Everyone's rescheduling. And it's like, there's only so many weekends, you know, in the year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's, yeah. We need to start doing like Tuesday morning gigs or something like that. <laughs> That's right. Well, <laughs> performing online, I guess, gives us a, a sort of a new opportunity. Um, but do you think it, I guess it loses the collaborative element that's so essential to jazz. And that was one thing picked up in, in the, the, the review uh, of, of the festival. You know, how, how do you think we can compensate that? And it's just something that we really miss. I mean, I think there really is no substitute for that live experience you know and you know that as a muso and and a, and an audience member like there's something magic that happens when you're at a gig and you're in that space and I don't know that there is anything that will ever replace that which is what I guess in a way that's a really valuable lesson to learn and in a way um hopefully people won't take music live music for granted as much if that was a thing I don't know like hopefully audiences might want to pay a little bit more to go see a show to support the audience to support the musicians wouldn't that be nice <laughs> wouldn't that be nice yeah and then everyone could get paid more and but it really is you know there is such a magical thing that happens and I know after the last kind of extended lockdown the first one of the first shows I went to see I saw Emma Pask uh play at now Mary's Underground but the old basement and just I, I was so emotional it was really it really surprised wow. me actually how much just seeing music live yeah <laughs> being in the room there 
just hit me. I was really like, wow. And I think a lot of people were. And I had the same, obviously I had the same experience the first gig I did back after not playing yeah. for a long time. Yeah. But um, I think that thing about being in the room is just magic and I just really am focused on that in a way. I just want to get back to that as soon as possible. And hopefully all the online, you know, the hybrid events and that, now we have the skills and all the musicians have the skills that will go along with it yes. and um, be part, yeah. like an, an extra offering and be part of it. Yes. But I'm, I think it's difficult to ever replace that feeling of being in a room with a whole heap of other people watching music <laughs> together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel that uh, as as an audience member as well as a performer, there is a there's a ritual that we that you know there's a performative ritual that we, that we undertake. And I guess you know even sitting still as an audience member for forty five minutes and <laughs> is without ch checking your phone is is kind of a a, a, um, a liberty and and something that that you know that's really uh, beautiful about about a going to a concert. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, also, yeah. you know, the sense of community, as you mentioned, seeing people um, in, in the audience and, um, uh, yeah, there's something spiritual about performing as well, you know, and the engagement that you have with, with the musicians on stage, I mean, especially in jazz with yeah. you know, being an improvised art form. Absolutely. Um, and, and that magic, that magic thing, like everyone, those gigs that you see or are part of that are really special, those moments, you never forget that stuff like the feeling you might forget exactly what happened you know who you talk yeah. to or that stuff but that feeling that you can get from music is just so uh so unique and rare and I think those those feelings are so precious and and we've just all been missing that so much so it'll be amazing when we can get back and hmm. I've just been reminiscing a lot like it's funny over the last week I've been re reminiscing a lot about like gigs, all time favorite gigs that I've all seen. Right. Just think, I can't stop thinking about Evan. Evan, my husband, he's like, okay, enough of enough with these conversations. <laughs> I'm like, well, what about that gig we saw here? And wasn't that great? And yeah, yeah, <laughs> or gig you did stuff like that. I think I'm just really missing it a lot at the moment. And yeah, you know, I can't wait. I just can't wait. It's going to be so fantastic and fun. I'll be yeah. there. I'm going to be at, like all the shows. <laughs> 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 It'll be awesome. Great. Well, I think that's a good, uh, a good note to wrap it up. Um, so once again, thanks so much to Sydney Improvised Music Association and Zoe Hartman for the lovely chat. Really good to catch up, Zoe. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Keep up the cool. good work, Jeremy. This is awesome. Cool. All <laughs> right. Well, uh, tomorrow is our our last last night of the festival, and we're going to be joined by a wonderful group from Melbourne called The Rest Is Silence. So, uh, hope to see you then. So once again, thanks a lot.